Hello, my savage gentlemen. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, I'm doing well, kind of. Today is going to be, a, it's going to be like one of those typical Matt rants where I'm going to talk about a bunch of different stuff um, and some stuff that I've been kind of thinking about. And then um, I'm going to tell you about a weird experience that I had. I told a few of you guys in your in your check-ins. Um, and then uh, we're just, we're going to be a little bit all over the map today. But what else is new, right? Um, coming to the end of the Savage and Six, man, and it's kind of like, it's bittersweet, you know? Uh, I always look forward to the last day. For me, it doesn't necessarily mean less work, because as soon as this one's done, I'm prepping meal plans, I'm getting everything ready for the next one. Um, still, of course, I have lots of clients outside of Savage and Six, and that's still growing, so it's always kind of go, 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 but it's, um, it's bittersweet in the sense that, um, the six weeks are done, and I, I watch a lot of you guys um, make some really big transformations. And the transformations are not always in the same realm. For like a lot of people, um, like a lot of people killed this challenge um, in the physical sense, and they lost a ton of weight, or they put on a ton of muscle. Um, but a lot of people have killed this challenge in the sense that I watched a, a really significant like mental change in the way that they perceive fitness and in the way that they perceive themselves and the way it's funny because I really do get personally involved with you guys and I, I get really involved I get really involved in your success right like I want to see you guys do well and we kind of build these relationships but I think um you know, as much as Savage and Six is about like a physical transformation, I won't get too feathery or airy on you guys. It's also about a mental transformation. And I've seen a lot of guys completely change the way that they think about fitness. And I've watched, I've watched a lot of guys break down um, blocks and walls in their perception about what they're capable of doing. And for me, like that's the most, that's, that's probably like sometimes the most exciting part is watching people gain confidence in themselves and their ability to uh, get through Savage and Six without dying because it's a hard, it's a hard challenge. Uh, it really, really is. So it's, you know, um, lots of you guys have made really, really good progress. Um, and then lots of you guys have made really, really good progress just in the way that you think about fitness and, and the way that uh, you treat the challenge and, uh, and a lot of those things. And for me, you know, that's just as rewarding. So. Um, looking forward to seeing the final check-ins coming up. Check-ins are going to be the same as the one where you checked in. You know what I mean? Um, for this one, guys, I, I would love to see you guys uh, take two sets of pictures. And one's going to be um, just holding. You've got to hold either you know the the picture of the of the iPad or the newspaper or something that's dated um, with the time on it. And I'd love to just see pictures without that as well. So uh, it's you don't have to, but um, if you guys want to take one with uh, with you holding the newspaper or the Google Time on your on your on your you know tablet or even your phone or whatever it is, just so that um, you know we can prove to anybody. Because I sometimes guys will transform and then people will not believe the transformations because they you you know they're so significant. So um, I just you've got to make sure that you have that that final picture right. Check-ins will be the same, um, same process for that otherwise. Just make sure you take the pictures with the timestamp uh, to qualify you guys for the prize. And um, and then usually for the last day, you know, we, it's like making the decision on the winners is always kind of, it's always kind of one thing that Sydney and I uh, struggle with. So we'll probably employ a little bit of help from the general public. And... Um, We'll kind of tie it all in like that because it's just, if I had it my way, you guys would all win. Uh, so anyway, that's that. I want to talk about a few different things. I want to talk about something which is a little bit personal and maybe I, I shouldn't talk about this, but I'm going to anyway because I, I did yesterday on Instagram. And if I can talk about it with Instagram, I can talk about it with you guys. So we had this amazing vacation with my mother. She's always, She only comes down for short periods of time because much like ourselves, she's just a super, super busy woman. Um, and uh, she's kind of like an HR consultant at a high level and does like career coaching. And she's, you know, she's held some pretty good positions over the years, but she comes down for a little bit at a time. So we took off, as you guys know, to Puerto Vallejo, went to Arenal Volcano and then came home. And uh, when we came home, 
I found out that uh, my house had been broken into when we were gone and somebody smeared shit all over our toilet. And uh, of course my mother's there and we're looking at the toilet and there's shit smeared everywhere. You know, um, I have a pretty good indication of who it is. I, I know, I'm, I almost know who it is. Um, but and when I first got in, I was furious. I was just, I was pissed off that somebody would violate uh, my space like that and come in here. Nothing was stolen, nothing was removed. And it all really, it, it stems, in my personal opinion, from uh, jealousy and from resentment. And, and as I always kind of talk about, you know, the people who do those kind of things are typically the people who are pissed off their own life. And for somebody to come in and smear shit on a toilet, like, that's fucking, excuse my language, but that's disgusting. Like, you're a fucked up individual. And I'm sorry, I'm, be I'm venting a little bit here. But um, I, I got upset at first. And I was really, really angry. Um, and then... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll this into fitness. I'm not just sitting here venting on you guys. Like, oh, I'm so angry. Uh, but anyway, so came in and, and we, cleaned up the, we cleaned up the shit. Um, and we decided that based on what happened, we're not going to stay in this house anymore. So we're moving to a much bigger place, uh, which has got two bedrooms, beautiful view, huge terrace. A um, little bit more expensive, not too, too much more expensive, but a little bit more expensive than this place. But well worth it for privacy, security, and just quality of life. Because the condo we have right now is super small. It's the smallest place I've ever been in. It's about 500 square feet, maybe not even, maybe 450, and just a little studio. But it was perfect for us getting here. So time to upgrade a little bit, um, and that'll be fun. And, and we reframed it in that opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to upgrade our lifestyle, right? Whoever did what they were doing did it with the intention of upsetting me. And uh, at first it did, and then I kind of I reframed it. And the same is true in life and everything else, you know? It's all about perspective and it applies to fitness. It applies to life in general. You know, if, if you have, it's not so much about facing challenges. It's not even about failing. It's just about how you take those challenges and how you perceive it. Because ultimately the way that you perceive it is going to directly influence your reaction to it. You know, if you're disappointed because, you know, you had a bad week or whatever else, you know, you can use that as a, as a learning opportunity. There's just, there's different ways to reframe things. I've reframed this to, uh, hey, I'm going to go and get a, get a nicer place, uh, better quality of life and, and that kind of thing. But the same, is, the same is true in fitness, right? It's really all about perception. You know, if there's an exercise that you suck at, um, I always tell people those are the ones that you should be doing the most of. And what I tend to find is that uh, when you do more of it, you start to love it. And it's those little weaknesses and stuff like that that, that you got to, ultimately work on to increase, um, to just push yourself and to get past things. But um, bodybuilding and just health and fitness uh, in general is just such a mental game because you just, uh, you know, the way that you, you know, if you fail on a set or if you're not feeling strong, or if, if you're not this, there's a lesson in everything, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And if you're, if you think about things properly, then um, you can learn those lessons and evolve from those lessons and become stronger for them or from them, right? And sometimes the lesson is that people are shit, which is, which is just not true of anybody. It's a very small percentage of people. but um, And sometimes the lesson is, you know, it's a push in the right direction. It's all, it's all about the way that you perceive things. It's all about the way that you react to them. And if you're open enough to kind of take an outside perspective, um, then... Ultimately, you're going to be open enough to make good decisions to be able to propel you away from that because life tends to throw you things just to see how you react and push you in certain directions. In my opinion, I'm a little bit of a fatalist like that, and I think that that's true. So that was my experience coming home yesterday. Um, it's been crazy. We're in the process of moving right now. Uh, we were planning on moving uh, at the end of next month, but I called up the landlord and I said, hey, there's a place available now. We'll take it. <laughs> so it's good. Life is good. We're moving. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is... Uh, is, you know, if you have a failure, if you have a bad week, if you have, uh, you know, if you're having difficulties, if you're not sleeping properly, you know, if you're, if you're not happy with the way that you're progressing, there's, there's always ways that you can, life is kind of like a game and there's always ways that you can uh, use those lessons to propel you to do bigger things, you know. And to, to be able to push yourself. The more time you spend in your comfort zone, outside of your comfort zone, I think that's is true in fitness as the rest of your life, 
um, the stronger you become and the more adaptive you become and ultimately the better you become. So anyway, there's a little bit of a, maybe that was a rant. Um, maybe that was a little bit of degassing, but that's what it's all about. We're friends now. We're all a big family. So anyway, uh, once again, I digress. I want to talk to you about a few different things. I told you guys that I took a diet break when I left. Um, so I came back. I was going to do a 24-hour fast. I'm going to do one this week at some point, but I just I've cut out, I cut my carbohydrates for the last two days. So I uh, woke up super early this morning. Not only did I cut my carbohydrates, but I went and um, I did my workouts and my cardio fasted, um, which means, of course, without food uh, so that I could burn off all the excess glycogen. I was planning on doing a fast. I was going to do it prior to doing the carb cut, but what I found is that um, even with the two days of cutting carbs, I'm probably even better than I was when I left in terms of uh, physical shape. So if you... Um, you know, if you have a bad day, there's there's a couple of techniques that you can use. One of those, which of which of course is is fasting, uh, provided that you talk to a doctor and that you don't have blood sugar issues. Um, I tend to do, as I said, I've talked to you guys before. I tend to do like 18 to 24 hour fast, usually once a week, and it's good for metabolizing a lot of the a lot of the garbage that's gunked up inside your cells and just flushing out the system. It increases your natural GH, your testosterone levels, and even though I love to eat. Um, it's been shown that fasting actually has a positive effect on overall body composition, which means that more muscle, less fat, which is kind of counterintuitive to what we might think. And excessive fasting, I'm not a fan of. There's, um, you know, there's guys who out there who fast for like three weeks, um, four weeks, and I personally don't believe that that's healthy or safe or anything even close to medically acceptable. Um, you can do some pretty bad liver and kidney damage. Anyway. Um, so I did that. I went down. I've been doing my fasted workouts. Um, worked out fasted yesterday. Worked out fasted today. And um, I'm almost back to where I was before I left. Maybe a little bit leaner. So things are good. Looking forward to getting back into jiu-jitsu. I'm going to kick my cardio up um, and just start doing a ton more cardio and try to get myself in the best cardiovascular shape for the tournament that's coming up here. Another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about today, this stuff. Now, I haven't had any of this yet. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to get my carbs going again tomorrow. If you get a chance, guys, uh, we're moving into uh, the end of the challenge. I, I'm going to create a bridge program, and as I said, and just to kind of like a pay what you can for anybody who's interested for the two weeks in between the challenges. It's going to be um, a little bit of a deload, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get you guys lifting a little bit heavier, uh, but a little bit less frequent with a little bit less cardio. And while I suggest that you generally stick to your diet. I also suggest you take a couple of days and just relax and just enjoy and have some food and reward yourself for all the hard work that you put in. And that doesn't mean eating 20 pizzas because you're going to digress and it's going to be hell. Um, but then you can use techniques like the fasting and cutting carbs and not all carbs, fibrous carbs. You need to have fibrous carbs because you need fiber in order to be able to digest things. But, um, you know, just stuff like rice and that kind of thing. Um, you know, if, if you, you can, cut out of your diet for a couple of days, deplete your glycogen, and you'll be surprised at how well, how well your body uh, will react to that and how quickly you'll recover. As well, of course, faster workouts, um, step up the cardio a little bit. But I think it's really important for you guys uh, who, you know, and everybody's pushed really hard to just take a little bit of time after it's all said and done. Anyway, um, nutritional yeast, guys, I know it sounds crazy. This stuff is absolutely phenomenal. It's got a ton, a ton, a ton of health benefits. And this makes salads taste amazing. It, uh, vegans, vegetarians uh, use it largely. It's high in B12, of course, says that right on the top of the package. Um, but it's kind of like cheese. I know it sounds weird. Like if you look at these flakes, they're almost like flakes. And it's got a really, really good texture. Using this on salads uh, is phenomenal. One, the, the macros on this are also absolutely amazing. It's, it's uh, really, really high in uh, niacin, which is vitamin B3, B6, B2, B1. A B12, and uh, for a quarter of a teaspoon, which is practically nothing, a quarter of a teaspoon of this stuff, it's got 0 0.5 grams of fat, which is negligible. It's got five grams of carbs. However, three of those are fiber, so they don't count towards the net fiber count, which is really, really good because that means it's also low in carbs, and it has a insane eight grams of protein for one quarter of a teaspoon, which is nothing eight grams of protein and stuff. And it's a really, really good, it provides really, really good texture on salads, um, on vegetables, stuff like that as well. 
Um, if you guys, if anybody's doing next Savage and Six, and you want some nutritional yeast in your diet, just put a little note in the diet questionnaire when I send that out, and say I'd like to try it. But go out and grab a bag. It's absolutely phenomenal. It'll change the way that you eat salads. It'll change the way you eat a lot of things. Extremely, extremely healthy. Very high in B vitamins, and uh, tastes amazing. You know, it really, really does. So go out and get yourself some nutritional yeast. You will thank me. I promise you and um, eat salad and be happy. So other than that, um, not a heck of a lot going on. I'm, as I said, I'm pretty busy moving and, and doing a bunch of things, but I just want to, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining me again for this challenge and uh, choosing to put your health in my hands and not necessarily in my hands because I, as, as I always say to you guys, I'm not, I don't do the work, I just facilitate it. I put together a plan, we make adjustments, we work together. But it's you guys who do the work, and um, I just want to thank you guys sincerely for uh, for choosing me to be along in that journey with you. You know, I've gotten some really I've gotten some really nice emails over the last uh, over the last few days and few weeks um, from people just reaching out and saying, "Hey, thank you very much. Um, you know, I really appreciate what you do." And to be honest with you, that's you know, it's it's really really rewarding. It's what I love to do. Um, I think in the future I'm going to be continuing to do the challenges, but I'm going to transition into some other things. I have some other ideas going on for businesses, but I think that uh, I will always do these challenges and I will always do them because I legitimately love to do them with you guys. You know, it, it eats up a lot of time, but there's nothing more rewarding. And, uh, and I think we built a pretty good brotherhood here. So awesome job. If anybody didn't check in as well, if, you, if I got any guys who are doing the light, if you want to shoot me a message, if you've got any questions, if there's ever anything I can do for you, I'm just really a message away. So feel free to do that, and I will gladly answer. Other than that, guys, you know we got a few days left. A few days. You know you've come so far, you've gone so hard. So it's, I'm sure by now you're probably uh, you're probably getting tired. But just see the see the end line in sight, and I really do, guys. Anti-hero fitness isn't just about getting into shape and staying in shape. It's about just breaking down barriers. You know, and it's about going out and, and putting yourself outside of your comfort zone and, and working hard. But it's, I, I encourage you guys to take a break because it's also about balance. You know what I mean? At the end of this, take a break. Honestly, take a couple of days off the gym. It's not going to kill you. Um, go eat some food. Spend some time with your families. And uh, take those extra couple hours a day that you've been spending at the gym and, and do something productive with it. I also uh, want to reiterate too, you know, um, Make sure that you're taking time to focus on all the other areas of your life, right? Self-growth is self-growth, but it's it's just self-growth physically is just like one of the small aspects in your life. So um, I guess what I'm trying to say is like you can grow your biceps and you can grow your back, but make sure you're growing your brain. You know what I mean? Make sure that you're, you know, you're if you're not a reader, you know, um, make sure that you're taking the time to consume information for for me a lot of the time it's podcasts um, or books or literature or um, whatever it might be maybe it's an instrument you know just make sure that you feed the rest of your passions you know you got all these different pots in life and it if you're putting all of your putting all your stuff in this fitness pot you know you got your creative pot and then you've got your uh, you know you've got your You've got kind of your creative pot over here where you want to create, and then you've got your ambitious pot where you're, you're putting things into work, and you're, you've got your family pot over here, and then you've got your whatever you have. Every, you've got all these little containers. Make sure that you put some stuff in all those other containers and, uh, you know, just pick up some new skills and, and just continue to seek knowledge and continue to educate yourself and, you know, I, I just can't stress enough how important um, the growth factor is in other areas of your life and just don't get tied up by staring at the scale and going to the gym every day and smashing weights. Life is so short. It really, really is short. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up coming out here. Of course, I told you guys a story about my buddy passing away. So, and just realizing that life is, life can be over tomorrow. So just... You know, it's good to stay focused and it's good to do the fitness thing, but just make sure that you're taking the time to uh, water all those other pots. Because I did the fitness thing and I, when I was younger and I was just I was so focused on that and I stopped watering all the other pots around me and ultimately I stopped growing because of it. So 
Anyway, a big rant today. I love you guys. You're killing it. And uh, I'm going to post another video tomorrow. And I'll keep you updated with my recovery process from, uh, from being away. And if any, any of you guys want to go out and have some fun and enjoy and you're kind of, you have some questions about what you can do to pull it back together after you go and let loose for a couple of days, maybe have some drinks, enjoy a barbecue, you know, um, skip the gym. Skip the gym for a couple of days, you know, take that stuff, go put it a little bit in your creative pot, go put some into your seeking knowledge pot, definitely your family pot because family is everything. Um, but just spread the love around, be nice to yourself. You got a few days left, so see the end in sight, create a reward for yourself and go out there and earn it. I hope you guys have an awesome night. It's an absolute pleasure and I will talk to you guys very, very soon.